calling chillaxing. Chillaxing is excellent. Hey, greetings everyone. Welcome to Third Space Coffee Break. Good morning. <clears throat> Today we are chillaxing with you, <laughs> as we were just discussing the word chillaxing. Yes, because Dan wanted to sit for coffee break. Yeah, I thought it would be fun because normally when you're, you know, with a person actually face to face, you're just sitting at the table having breakfast or lunch or truth sipping some coffee. So I thought this is pretty casual and I'm a casual guy. So very, this is, yes, very, it's very warm in here today. So I, true confessions, Dan has coffee and I have ice uh, hint in my cup because I could not bear to drink anything warm this morning. Um, so I'm going to just tell on myself before I end up spilling this all over the table and then you wonder why my coffee is clear. So it was just that kind of a day. Has anybody else been like really hot or is it just me? I feel like all, the, all of a sudden we went from cool to very warm. Not that I'm complaining. I'm very happy um, to see the, the transitions. It just feels, it always feels like it happens fast. We don't get much leeway in there. So Well... I'm okay. I think I'd rather be a little warm than a little cold, so. This is true. And if you know Dan at all, then you know that he really does not like to be cold at all. At all. Yes. So yes. he lives for this time of year, and he does not live for um, being in the air conditioning. So no. I actually turned on the air yesterday because my house was pretty warm, and all day long he was telling me how cold he was and putting on flannel uh uh, things and stuff, and we keep our air at 78 for any sort of perspective, so. Which, which is good. So, well, I'm a lot like my mom who's online. Hi, mom. We, I'm always cold, so, you know, I, and I like actually being able in the summer to walk around my house with, you know, not having socks on and uh, even no shirts, so I like it a little bit warmer, but I actually don't get to do that often. Cause I'm <laughs> no. I, even at 78, I'm too cold to do that. So. Even at 78 degrees, he still wears a flannel. So I guess you're just naturally a cold person. What can I say? I am. I am. Hey, good morning, Tracy. Good morning. Good morning. So I'm curious um, how many of you are dealing with end of the school year stuff. Um, so uh, we were just chatting about our son who is... 17 and in his senior year of school and has a terrible case of senioritis for lack of a better term So the end of the school year. I don't think has ever been so painful This has just been a really hard time for him to try to stay focused when you're so close to the finish line when you just really want to quit so yeah. It's been an interesting time. So how's it going with you guys with end of school years anybody? Um, like me who is d finding out what it's like to teach from home um, I had the opportunity to homeschool previously. Um, I did homeschool our older son for a couple of years, so um, I've kind of been in these shoes before, but it is a very different way right now with dealing with um, with COVID and just um, the, the workload that Luke has is, is quite hard because he's a senior. And then my younger son, who is now home with us too, um, who has special needs and needs a lot of help with his, his work and stuff, it really changes the dynamic of your day for sure. So how is homeschooling going for any of my moms that, are, that might be watching? I'd be curious to hear your feedback. And are you excited that the year's almost over or uh, you know, you're ready for summer break or I don't know, are you loving it? Tell me about it. So. I, I couldn't handle doing, I don't think, homeschool with the, with the kids. So uh, every once in a while I'll help Luke with something, our oldest son, or maybe even Shane, our youngest son. But You do a great job. But, uh, yeah, she, Angie, my wife does much better. So. Wow, I'm already sweating. Yeah. It's really hot in here. Uh, it's perfect. Don't <gasps> let her fool you. It's perfect in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I am so hot. Oh, I might have to start fanning her. Yes, I'm, I'm melting. So if you're looking in the camera and I'm perspiring, I apologize, everybody. Yeah. Good morning to everybody who is hopping on the call. I see lots so of names. Guy and Kimberly. And yes, and uh, Guy, you know, we do not plan on, uh, we don't plan on closing third space. So we don't know yet what it's going to look like for us to to open. We, so for us, it's a kind of a big process, really. We have to restock up on supplies, rehire staff, uh, and uh, yeah, so we really don't know. We're not very excited about doing just a takeout type of thing or just a take uh, because... That was never the vision. That was never the vision for us. So 
Yeah, we, we might ride it out just a little bit longer, see what's going on. Our team is actually getting together on June 6th, and I suspect we'll talk a little bit more about what uh, the future for Third Space looks like. But we have tossed around some ideas, actually, of like opening a few hours in the evening or a few hours during one day a week or something to try to just do some, you know, offer a, a very limited menu, you know, some of the drinks and maybe cinnamon rolls or something, but don't know for sure, so. Yeah, tossing but, out lots of ideas and really are, I mean, if you have thoughts on that, if you have feedback, you know, always we welcome your thoughts and ideas. We're really just wanting to not lose connection with our customers because we just really enjoy being with our community, so that was really special. And, um, and I see uh, Kimberly misses her chocolate-covered cherry latte. I so agree. That was a delicious latte. Yeah. That one gets a shout-out from Jesse, who is another of our team members who actually was the author and creator of the chocolate-covered cherry latte. So everything that we serve here at Third Space, we really put our hearts and souls into it. We, we uh, definitely did a lot of tasting and trying and experimenting. It was something that was just really fun for our team. So we, we really enjoyed that part of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the peppermint mocha, Linda, that was probably one, my favorite, oh, yeah. actually. So. Mint mocha is so good. Yes. Yeah. That was the one that we labored over the longest. I think I mentioned that in a previous uh, yeah. visit, but that was a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, if, if I am completely honest, I would actually probably prefer just regular coffee, honestly, to, to all the specialty drinks. Um, I'm, I actually have learned I, not to drink like sweet drinks. I just kind of got myself into the habit growing up. So uh, I actually just prefer a non-sweet, you know, just a coffee. So uh, I'm a little weird like that. But every He's once, a purist. But every He's once a purist. in a while, I do get a good craving for a, a nice peppermint mocha or, or chocolate-covered cherry mm -hmm. latte or so something. Good. So good. Yeah. yeah. Of the yeah. sweet drinks, I would go for the mint mocha too. But the chocolate-covered cherry was just... It was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. <clears throat> one of the things we were talking about is what are the things that we appreciate more now than we did before the restrictions? Yeah. Yeah. So um, that is definitely something on the mind. And is anybody out there like me who has a dog that has now, be I've become the dog groomer in my household. My poor dog looks like he got trimmed with a weed whacker. I do my best. I mean, I've seen worse, but it's not great. So it's one of those things where you really appreciate being able to take your dog to the dog groomer is just something that I, I just really appreciate. And I'm starting to hear that there uh, are some dog groomers that are opening up. So I think that might be changing now. Mm -hmm. But I'm really looking forward to being able to just show appreciation to uh, my dog groomer and just tell her how much I appreciate her hard work because it's way harder than it looks. <laughs> yes. The dogs don't really cooperate as well as humans. No, Although no. there's probably some humans that don't either. And of course, I know a lot of people are missing their own barbers yeah. and uh, yeah. hairstylists um, and stuff like that. So, yeah, those people you really, really miss. Now, Angie cuts every all of our hair. Yeah. Sometimes Luke will take somewhere. Yeah. Our oldest son, but uh, she always cuts my hair. When I when I was uh, when we got married, I said, "Well, you either got to learn to cut my hair, or I'm going to cut it." So. And when he cuts it, he just, it's all gone. And I just didn't like it like that. So I just learned how to cut it. He was a trooper. He got a couple of bad haircuts in the beginning. And he was a trooper about it. He used to always say, eh, you know, it's a few days between a good haircut and a bad haircut. So it's been almost 19 years. So I've gotten pretty good at cutting hair. Yeah. Surprisingly, you would think I'd be better at cutting the dog's hair with that in mind, but I'm just not. Um, so anyways, you are definitely easier to trim up than the dog. Yes. Well, that's good, I guess. <laughs> So, yeah, if you if you know a groomer that's open, I guess feel free to mention that here uh, mm -hmm. in the chat. Maybe there's others that would uh, love to take advantage of that. Although I can imagine, I would think the groomers would be really busy right now, like because everybody's trying to get their dog in. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, but, for yeah. sure. So those are people we we definitely uh, appreciate. I, I I think a lot of people miss actually just going into a restaurant and having a meal. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what we said. We said, man, we need, date night is you yeah. can't just go and sit at a restaurant. Um, so that we really miss that actually. Yeah, our nineteenth anniversary is coming up um, in June, the beginning of June, and um, Dan said to me, "What are we going to do for our anniversary this year?" And we were like. Huh. All the usuals are kind of out, so we are. We're thinking we're just gonna. We love Thai food, so I think we're just gonna pick up some takeout Thai 
and maybe go to the park or something and eat there. So we can still have some getaway time, which is really nice. We just enjoy time when we can mm -hmm. get away and actually connect. We're connecting kind of people. That's why we do third space the way we do. It's just, it's important to have times like that. So yeah. anyways, everything looks different right now, so. All right, so I'm gonna go off on a bunny trail here, but we are talking about dogs. And um, how many of you do doggy talk at home? <laughs> Oh, I was introduced to doggy talk by my wife when we got our dog. So it was very, very odd to me. Now I just, you know, I'm just a part of it. And but uh, we we actually have this voice that we use, and we pretend our dog talks all the time, and we actually answer. You know, so if one of us pretends we're the dog, and we'd be like, you know, um, uh, the dog say something like, um, "I need to go out to make boom boom." And uh, that's, that's, code, that's dog code for we need to go out and use the potty. So. And then we answer them, you know, we answer the, the other we person. We do. It's really kind dogs. of pathetic. It's, and, and I'm wondering, actually, while, while you're confessing our weirdness, welcome to the Ultimuses. We're mm -hmm. very weird people, so extremely weird. And we have a lot of fun, and we like to laugh. So doggy language is something I grew up with. Every dog always had a voice when we grew up, and they had their own language that they spoke and they had their own pitch and sound to their voice. So all dogs we've ever owned have had doggy language. So ours is uh, no exception there. So yeah, very odd. Yes. It is very odd. And I think my husband just is enjoying poking a little fun at me this morning. Hey, I'm poking fun <laughs> at myself because I join in uh, as much as anyone. So hey, the phone's ringing. Yeah, hey, Somebody's like calling third space. Wow. And I do see we have a question because Kimberly would like to know if we have ground coffee. I do have. Uh, I do have two bags of whole bean coffee left, um, but I don't really have uh, any ground coffee for sale just because we're not open right now. But um, I can um, recommend OneVillage.com. That is our coffee roaster. And One Village is um, where you would get any coffee that we would have served here, they would have at One Village. Uh, so OneVillage.com, um, they can get you connected to uh, our coffee. And hopefully we'll be soon to be able to sell it to you. Yeah, we, we do when we're open. We, we sell the bags of coffee and then we're able to grind it. Yes, we can do it when we're open. Yeah, yeah, when we're open. We probably wouldn't, wouldn't do so now, but... Um, yeah, so... Yeah. But, so, anyways, this, this week we had our first Common Ground, um, the, uh, the church that owns Third Space. We had our first uh, in-person gathering uh, last week, I guess. It was last Friday when we went into Yellow. And boy, was it good to just be in person with some folks that you know we hadn't really been in person with in a long time. It felt like forever, uh, but that was really fun. Yeah, it's so good to be with people again. Even if we can't hug them, we can still at least be near them now, which is really awesome. That's a great thing. Yeah. And um, you know, unfortunately, though, on the way home from that gathering, we had a slight incident. So mm -hmm. apparently, the deer population is thriving because one of them jumped out um, as we were driving home and we took a uh, hard hit to the front of the car. The, um, the hardest part about hitting a deer that I've come to discover is actually, as for me anyways, I felt so bad for the deer. I, all I, could, I wanted to, need to see what happened to it. I wanted to make sure it was okay or whatever, which it definitely wasn't okay. It was a pretty bad uh, wreck anyways. But um, yeah, I was so bothered by thinking about what had happened to that poor deer. Though for the, like the next two days, it was all I could think about. So, yeah, all was... all those years of hunting, uh, I did bow hunting and, and a little bit of rifle, but I, I never got a deer. And then, you know, I got one with the car now. So, jeez, <laughs> damn, that's terrible. Hello, that's awful. I'm just saying. Oh my goodness. It wasn't the way we wanted to, that's for sure. No, and and I, it was not, and it obviously um, is not well. Wherever it is, is it's not doing well. So I would think probably not. Yeah. But. Anyway, so we've had a little bit of fun with dealing with estimators and everything like that. Fortunately, my car is not totaled, so I'm very happy to report we still do have a vehicle that is drivable um, and will be able to be fixed. Because I love my car and I really didn't want to get a new one. So, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, well, uh, we, you know, again, so just with Third Space, um, uh, some of you are praying for, uh, you know, our decisions about going forward, and we appreciate your prayers. Uh, we're actually we're praying about Common Ground, too, because many of you know we did the dinner church up at the Borough Hall, 
Uh, it was like a big community dinner, and it really was a very awesome community environment, but we can't do that. So we're really starting to think, okay, so what's next steps here for third space and for common ground for the community dinner? So we, we have a couple ideas maybe, and uh, well, we do have a couple ideas that we've been tossing around stuff, but not sure yet. But June 6th, I think our team, again, is getting together. Hopefully we'll maybe uh, make some decisions then. So. Yeah, hopefully we'll know something more soon, but just know that we miss you guys. Yep. And um, on that note, I think we're going to make a transition again, talking about third space. I always try to bring you guys something that's related to third space um, from a food perspective, maybe something that you can do at home or just something that you, will help you to know something more about us. But one of the things that I wanted to share with you guys is such a simple recipe that is something a little bit healthier than what I typically make on this. Usually we're making something that's a little bit more sweet and decadent here because it goes good with coffee. But So um, ironically, we're going to talk about tuna fish today. And if anybody's groaning, I really would like you to give me just a couple minutes of your time because it's so worth it. Let me just tell you. Um, we did not have tuna salad on the regular menu uh, for third space, but made it up on the fly a few times when we had people ask for it. And let me just tell you, um, I have the best tuna fish recipe that you've ever had in your entire life. And I would wager most people would enjoy it, unless they're hardcore, like, not fish people. So um, I'm going to make for you the best tuna salad you've ever had, and I hope you have all these ingredients at home so that you can make them. Uh, yourself because it's a great uh, lunch. It is. It does have a little bit of fat in it, but it's also a lot of healthy stuff in here. It's not too bad. So um, one of the things that makes it so delicious is I really do recommend albacore tuna. I know a lot of people use just traditional chunk light tuna. You can do that. I don't think it's quite as good. So, but I know there's a little bit of controversy over albacore. Some people don't like to use this. I do. Um, so I have two cans of just drained uh, albacore tuna. It's just packed in water. Um, and what makes uh, this tuna salad so good is number one, this is a really firm, light tasting fish because it's albacore. But we have a couple secret ingredients that really make this tuna salad pop. One of which is a hard boiled egg. And um, that doesn't usually go into tuna salad, but it is going to go into tuna salad today. And I'm going to task Mr. Ultimus with uh, peeling this hard boiled egg while I work on some of the other ingredients. Now, if you have trouble peeling hard boiled eggs, hold on one second, the trick with these are you always want to pop the top and the bottom of the egg on your table before you start trying to peel it because you want to break through that membrane that's on the inside of the egg. So if you pop the top part and pop the bottom, and then you should be able to roll it a little bit and get that shell off. It will help you get past that membrane. I also tend to boil my eggs with a little bit of salt in the water. It makes the eggs a little bit easier to peel. They're the hardest to peel when they're cold. You oh. have to roll it a little bit. I have to roll it. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. And that should help you crack through that membrane. Okay. And then you should be able to get it. Five years later. <laughs> That's Still. all right. That's all right. So um, Dan's going to peel that hard-boiled egg. You're doing just fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and finally dice up some onion. And I love uh, a nice, light, sweet onion in this salad. And if you're thinking, ooh, that's going to be too strong, trust me, um, the onion is really good in the salad. So I highly recommend that you do it. So I'm going to just really finely dice um, a little bit of onion. I would put probably a third of a cup at least. Um, I tend to be a little heavy-handed with my vegetables, but I would probably put about a third of a cup of onion in this salad. Should I go rinse this off? Uh, if it's really got a lot of pieces on it, go for it. I think we probably should rinse the shell off. All right, you go ahead and do shell that. Off. So you rinse the shell. All right, so I'm going to just really uh, dice this down. And that looks like a good amount of onion. All right, so really finely diced. And I'm going to just drop that right in here. So actually, I'm going to switch to a bigger bowl. All right, hold on one second. You stay there with your egg. Okay. All right. All right, so diced onion goes in the bowl. And then the other thing that I add is fresh celery. Once again, I would recommend at least a third of a cup of celery goes into this mix. But I would really be heavy handed on my veggies. I really I encourage you, if you like the crunchy stuff, it only enhances the flavor. So, but just dice them down really fine. And you wanna have just nice tiny little pieces. You don't want big chunks. Now, what I would like you to do, Mr. Ultimus, I'm going to have you take this fork, and I want you to put the egg right here on this board. We're going to put flat side down, and go ahead and start mashing that. 
Um, you do not want to chop your egg. You want to mash it into bits, tiny little bits. So just work on mashing that until it's pulverized to nothing. You're not going to have any chunks of egg in your in your tuna salad. You don't want chunks. You just want it to, it really essentially disappears. Mash it to death and it'll essentially just disappear right into the salad. And it just makes a delicious flavor. It adds richness, color, um, density, and it really helps the salad to hold together. It's just very flavorful and good. I feel like I'm doing a craft in school or something. Is that bad? <laughs> I hope we're better than that. Arts and crafts time. All right. How's that going for you? You're doing a great job. It's, That's perfect. It's there, almost. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to finish dicing up a little bit of this celery. So is anybody a tuna fish fan? Does anybody like tuna fish? Or We, we did have requests for it at third space, even though it wasn't on our menu. So um, We just made it up every so often. And I think, actually, if we ever do get back to full reopening again, I think it's something I'd like to see added because we had enough requests for it. And quite frankly, I think ours is some of the best. So, all right. That looks great. So you can go ahead and just uh, use the spoon or the fork or whatever and just kind of pick those up and add it right into our bowl here. Right. Put the bowl a little closer to you. And that's the end of the hard work that we have to do. Everything else is super easy. I'm trying to remember, did Luke taste this? Did our oldest no, son? he didn't. He, I couldn't get him to taste it. Our oh. oldest son is extremely picky. He's tough. He's a tough one. All right, so we've got our celery, our onion, our tuna, and our very finely mashed up egg. To this, we're going to add a tablespoon of sweet pickle relish. Um, I recommend Vlasic brand. I think it is the absolute best tasting sweet pickle relish out there. We've got a nice big teaspoon of yellow, just regular yellow mustard, nothing fancy. And I have about a third of a cup of mayonnaise, a good quality mayonnaise. And that is all we've got going on in here. And this is going to make a ton of sandwiches, at least four, if not five, big sandwiches of tuna salad. Um, but this is one of those things you can mix up and the flavors will just keep getting better as it sits, but it's also delicious straight away. I mean, there's, you don't have to wait. It's good right out the gate. So, um, but the flavors are fantastic. I highly recommend if you like a good tuna sandwich, give this a try. It's fantastic on a nice bed of lettuce. If you're carb watching, put it on a nice bed of lettuce and you're good to go, but this will make, like I said, four huge sandwiches, five sandwiches. It's a, it's a good helping of tuna fish. Yeah. And Dan, you're lucky. I have some nice crackers for you here. Oh, some tuna fish cracker sandwiches. So you can have some tuna fish to try. Hi, Wendy. Good to see you, even if you are late. You can always go back and watch the video too, so but good to see you. All right. Taste test. That's Wonderful. the best part. And you see it has this nice, nice golden color to it. It's from the egg and the mustard. It really is kind of a different flavor and taste than traditional tuna. And I really, once again, try the albacore if you've never had it before. It's so much better. Mm. How's it going for you? Yeah. <laughs> good stuff? It is going. It's it good going, stuff. It's going well. All right. So that is it for third space today. I am going to dip right into this because this looks so delicious. And I'm going to eat a cracker too. Mm -hmm. But we had a good time with coffee break today, yeah. and I hope you will try the tuna salad. And once again, we appreciate everybody hopping on and supporting us. It's always good to see you guys, and we hope you have yeah. a great day. So blessings and peace to you in the name of Jesus, and have a wonderful day. We'll see you. Bye.